Good morning, everyone. Another God's peace. Peace, big guy. Peace, everybody. Peace. Peace be with you. Peace, my dear. Thank you. Peace. 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 Good morning, everyone. Um, so today is... Welcome to those of you who are joining us online. No, you are not seeing some weird hat, or maybe you are. Um, we are starting our service down here in the parish hall, um, and you will see the sanctuary upstairs if you're watching online. Um, you'll be able to hear the service, and we will be then processing around the outside of the building and then coming in for the main procession um, about 10 minutes into the service. Uh, please, if you are able to stop by the church this week, if you're not able to be with us today, and if you want to pick up palms or palm branches, you are more than welcome to do so. Our story begins with the liturgy of the palms. And it is found in your service bulletin. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Let us pray. Assist us mercifully with your help, O Lord God of our salvation, that we may enter with joy upon the contemplation of those mighty acts whereby you have given us life and immortality. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus and his disciples had come near the of Olives, sent two A very cut the road ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna comes in the name of the Lord in the highest. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee, the word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to praise you, Almighty God, for the acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. On this day, he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was proclaimed as king of kings by those who spread their garments and branches of palm along the way. Let these branches be for us signs of his victory and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our king and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life who lives and reigns in glory with you and his Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. 
At this time, you'll be invited to follow and torchbearers around the outside of the church, and we will come in on the... You may grab palms or palm crosses or both along the way. Cross. Crucifer. Okay. All right. Oh, Isaiah, you're here now? Give it to him.
almighty and ever-living God, in your tender love for the human race, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our nature and to suffer death upon the cross, giving us the example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of suffering and also share in his resurrection through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of God's holy word. When Jesus and his disciples had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethpage at the Mount of Olives. Yeah. No, I, yeah, I already read that. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yep. I'm sorry. Okay. A reading from the book of Isaiah. The Lord has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have, been, have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend, contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me, who will declare me guilty. The word of the Lord. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 31, verses 9 through 16, found in your bulletin. And we are going to say this psalm antiphonally, breaking at the asterisk. I'll say the first part at the asterisk you follow. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My body is consumed with sorrow, and also my throat and my belly. For my life is wasted with grief, and my years with sighing. My strength fails me because of affliction, and my bones are consumed. I have become a reproach to all my enemies, and even to my neighbors, a dismay to those of my acquaintances. When they see me in the street, they avoid me. I am forgotten like a dead man, out of mind. I am as useless as a girl of God. For I have heard the whispering of the crowd. Fear is all around. They put their heads together against me. They plot to take my life. For as for me, I have trusted in you, O Lord. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Make your face to shine upon your servant. And your loving kindness save me. A reading from Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, 
so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Please be seated for the reading of the Passion. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. One of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, Judas, it's Judas. Judas. What will you give me if I betray Jesus to you? They paid him 30 pieces of silver, and from that moment he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus saying, He said, Go into the city to a certain man and say to him, The teacher says, My time is near. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he took his place with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. And they became greatly distressed, and began to say to him one after another, He answered, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to the one by whom the Son of Man is, <laughs> is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. Judas, who betrayed him, said, He replied, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took a nap, a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them and said, 
Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never again drink of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters because of me this night, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this very night before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death, remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little further, he threw himself on the ground and prayed. My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again he went away for the second time and prayed. My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the words, the same words. And then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is, is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him. At once he came up to Jesus and said, And he kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you are here to do. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly, one of those with Jesus put his hand on his sword and drew it and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my father and he will at once send me more than twelve legions of angels? But how, how then would the scriptures be fulfilled, which says it must happen in this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But, but all this has taken place so that the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, in whose house the scribes and the elders had gathered. But Peter was following him at a distance, as far as the courtyard of the high priest. And going inside, he sat with the guards in order to see how this would end. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for false testimony against Jesus so that they might put him to death, but they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. At last, two came forward and said, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. The high priest stood up and said, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, Jesus 
Jesus said to him, You have said so, but I tell you from now on, you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, They answered, He deserves death. Then they spat in his face and struck him, and some slapped him, saying, Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A servant girl came to him and said, But he denied it before all of them, saying, I do not know what you're talking about. When he went out to the porch, another servant girl saw him, and she said to the bystanders, Again, he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Then he began to curse, and he swore an oath. At that moment, the cock crowed. Then Peter remembered what Jesus had said. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. When morning came, all the chief priests and all the elders of the people conferred together against Jesus in order to bring about his death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. When Judas, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he repented and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders. He said, But they said, Throwing down the pieces of silver in the temple, he departed, and he went and hanged himself. But the chief priest, taking the silver, said, It is not lawful to put them into the treasury, since they are blood money. After conferring together, they used them to buy the potter's field as a place to bury foreigners. For this reason, that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah, and they took the 30 pieces of silver, the price of the one on whom a price had been set, on whom some of the people of Israel had set a price, and they gave them for the potter's field, as the Lord commanded me. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Jesus said, you say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, But he gave him no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd anyone whom they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, for he realized that it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, have nothing to do with that innocent man, for today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, and they said, Pilate said to them, 
All of them said, Let him be crucified. Then he asked, But they shouted all the more. Let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, Then the people as a whole answered, His blood be on us and on our children. So he released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry the cross. All stand, please. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among them by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head, they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then the two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him shaking their heads and saying, In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking him, saying, The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani. That is, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Then some of the bystanders heard it. They said, At once, one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with some sour wine, and put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and rocks were split. The tombs were also open and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tomb and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and saw what took place, they were terrified saying, Many women were also there, looking on from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee and had provided for him. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. 
When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. So Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn in the rock. He then rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite the tomb. The next day, that is the day after the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Pilate said to them, So they went with the guard and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone. Please be seated. Today marks the end of Lent and the beginning of Holy Week. Throughout Lent, we have listened to stories that demonstrated the power and faithfulness of God. As we enter Holy Week, the focus of the stories shift. We hear instead of Jesus preparing the disciples for what is about to happen. They will not understand. Even as the events unfold before them, events that we heard described in today's reading from the Passion, they will be in disbelief. The long-awaited Messiah was not supposed to perish, but live. And, and bring freedom from oppression and restore Israel to wholeness and stature. Only later would the disciples understand this is exactly what Jesus does, just not in the way they expected. In the meantime, they struggle to understand. Just as some of us today struggle, to understand how we can begin our service reading about the joyful entry of Jesus and the triumphant entry into Jerusalem and end our readings by saying crucify him. Historically, this was not the case in our worship. However, the fewer and fewer people who attended the Holy Week services the church felt they had to do something to help people know and not lose sight of what makes our Easter celebration such a celebration. The resurrection that we celebrate on Easter morning is a powerful and faithful image of God's love for us. But it is only the icing on the cake, if you will. At the heart of salvation's story are those events we heard in the Passion. We just read. Entering Jerusalem, Jesus is hailed as a king. Fulfilling the prophecy of Zechariah, he rides down the Mount of Olives into Jerusalem on the back of a donkey. This image was not unknown to the people of Israel. It was foretold. And Jesus coming down humbly, not like a warrior 
on a big, proud war horse with his spoils of war walking in front of him, he enters humbly into the city. Just as kings have done in ages past, just as the promised Messiah would do. Now, seeing this, some begin to throw their cloaks and palms on the road along the way. And some seeing them do this begin to do the same. And before you know it, there's a crowd. Everyone hailing the king of Israel. But when some take a look at who it is they are hailing, they say, who is this? It's not our king. And this gentleman doesn't look anything like a warrior. So they'd ask that question again. As we heard in Matthew this morning, who is this? And the answer they are given is Jesus of Nazareth in Galilee. Now that answer alone would have caused some commotion of its own nature. Because some were feeling that they may have been tricked into giving praise, paying homage to another. Oh, he may be a prophet, but he was certainly no warrior, no messiah. He had no legion of soldiers following behind him to vanquish Rome. He must be an imposter. His next actions, according to Matthew, would have caused problems of their own. Not only had he declared himself king by riding down the mountain as he had into Jerusalem, but upon entering the temple, what does Matthew say he does? He begins to overturn tables, chasing people out of the temple courts. And in declaring what can or should happen in the temple courts, Jesus places himself above the high priest. All this together sets the stage for what we heard in our passion story. Now we are told in scripture, there's some who would have wanted to settle things right then and there with Jesus. But this was the Passover feast. People from all over Israel were coming to Jerusalem to celebrate. People who had heard Jesus speak and who believed his message of hope. Those in power were afraid of the people. So they plotted, waiting for when they felt the time would be right. And as they planned Jesus' demise, Jesus uses his time to prepare his disciples. He knows they, like many of those who lined the street on his entry, hope for the freedom from oppression and the restoration the Messiah is expected to bring. So he spends his remaining time with them, teaching them that hope lies not in the power of humanity, but in the power of God power that is about to be revealed to them in a way they had no idea it could be. Hearing this, they struggle to understand. Even on that last night, as Jesus has supper with them, as he prays with them, telling them things clearly that are going to happen, Thomas, will openly admit, Lord, we don't understand. And Jesus' answer to them is simply, have faith. For very soon they will understand. And when they do, they will change the world. We, who follow in the footsteps of the disciples, who promise to follow their teaching, continue in their practice of breaking of bread and gathering together like we are today in fellowship, promising to pray with 
and for one another, do we understand? Or have we lost our connection to the truth revealed to the disciples? The farther away we move from the events that happened and the less that we hear about them, their meaning can get lost in the mire of life. Even as a reminder of these events is thrust upon us, as it was in today's reading of the Passion, those events are offered viewed, often viewed as in the past, without any real meaning or purpose today. Oh, many are sorry that Jesus suffered pain in the events that we heard about, but we often choose to look beyond them, to look past them, we don't want to look up and see Jesus hanging on the cross. We want to look up and see an empty cross. Because we are people of the resurrection. We would rather focus on the joy of the empty tomb than acknowledge the guilt of knowing that what Jesus endured, he endured on our behalf. Reality something I believe Palm Sunday reminds us is that this joy and guilt are inseparable. Like in our reading today, both are a response to the witness of a love so great, so great, that it would do everything possible to keep us from separating ourselves from it forever. Did love succeed in what it intended? I would like to think so. We know at the end of Holy Week we will see that love could not be suppressed. Love, in fact, has the power to conquer all, even death. But today, we are at the beginning of Holy Week. And before we reach the end, where our joy is made complete, like our Lord, we must travel through some difficult times. The good news is unlike the disciples at that time, we know how the story ends. And because we do, even in the darkest moments we hear about throughout this week, we can have hope. Our hope never fades. Our trust in the love we witness gives us strength to face our own trials and tribulations. As the psalmist wrote, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For God is with me. His rod, his staff, they comfort me. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Throughout the church year, we are constantly being reminded of God's love for us. But in the closing days of the week, we see that love made manifest so that all who see might believe. I invite you, therefore, to come and see for yourselves the depth of the love we profess to know and share. Attending, if not all of our services this week, at least those of Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and the vigil on Saturday. Together, these three services reveal love that cannot help but make our celebration on Easter morning that our Lord lives, not just that first Easter morning, but every morning since, all that much more meaningful and joyful. 
thereby giving us the strength and courage we need to go out into the world and share not only what we know, but what we have witnessed for ourselves. God's love not just for us, but for all. Amen. Continuing on page 326 in the Book of Common Prayer, let us stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son with the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people are found on page 329 in your Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church and the world. Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee, to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Scott, our bishop, Tom, our priest, Terry, our postulant for the diaconate, that they may inspire and equip us to plan and work and pray for the growth of the church. Grant that they may, both by their life and their doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially President Joe Biden, the governor of the state Jim Pillen, and the elected officials of our individual communities, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor those who are ill, shut in, hospitalized, or recovering, especially James Henry, 
Tori S., Eddie, Rick C., Carol M., Jen C., Pat S., Jean H., Toby W., Charlotte A., Claire B., Chris B., Marlene G., Joan. Are there others? And those with special concerns, especially Susan A., Ted P., the Chelsea family, Linda, Carol, the Wilsons. Are there others? And all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. We ask that you be with the poor and the oppressed, the unemployed and the destitute, especially those who are hungry, cold, and in need of our help, those imprisoned or held captive, especially those who struggle to survive, and all those who in this life face danger, violence, oppression, or degradation of any kind. We ask that you watch over all the members of our armed forces, especially those who are deployed. Are there any to name? And all their families, until they are once again reunited in peace. We also ask that you protect all those who are traveling and cannot be with us today, especially Nanette, Kathy, the Baxter family, the Overly family. Are there others? The Estradas. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, pray for the province of the Episcopal Church of South Sudan. In the Diocesan cycle of prayer, pray for St. Matthew's Alliance, Calvary Church, Hyannis, St. Augustine's DeWitt, St. Elizabeth's Holdridge, Reverend Rick Moon, and in the DR, St. James the Apostle Church, Reconciliation Church, St. George Church. In the parish cycle of prayer, pray for the parish administrator, for this gathering, and for all ministers and people. We give thanks for those who are celebrating birthdays this week, especially Lisa, Melanie, Bo. Are there others? And those who are celebrating wedding anniversaries this week, are there any to name? And for those people and occasions that you name at this time. We also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed in this life in thy faith and fear, especially Deacon Roger, the victims of violence, Dan Wilson. Are there any others to name? Beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service and to grant us peace and grace so to follow the good examples of all thy saints that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. 
Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end, that all who believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. This is a true saying, and worthy of all to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And if anyone sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is a perfect offering for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for sin, the sins of the whole world. Almighty God, whose will it is to hold both heaven and earth in the peace of your kingdom, give peace to your church, peace among nations, peace in our homes, and peace in our hearts. All this we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us as an offering and sacrifice to God.
All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Amen. Our service continues with Eucharistic Prayer 1, found on page 333 in the Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right and so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee. O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who for our sins was lifted high upon the cross, that, we might draw the whole, that he might draw the whole world to himself, who by his suffering and death became the author of eternal salvation for all who put their trust in him. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father. For that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption who made thereby his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute in his holy gospel, command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, Drink ye all of this. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts which we now offer unto thee the memorial thy son hath commanded us to make having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same and we most humbly beseech thee O merciful father to hear us and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we receive in them according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, holy institution, and in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire our fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee, to grant it by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all of the benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who should be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ. Be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction and made one body with him that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins, 
<clears throat> to offer unto thee any sacrifice. Yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bound and duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, O gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on them in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. Body of Christ, bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation.
read on page, <clears throat> excuse me, 339 in the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank Thee for that Thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of Thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members in corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. And may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding. Keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for our announcements. A couple of thank yous I'd like to get out first. Um, thank you to everyone who showed up yesterday. We had a really nice turnout for the parish cleanup day. Uh, we got quite a bit done throughout the building. There are still a few small projects outside if you want to take advantage of some of the nice weather we're having uh, to help maybe pick up some sticks and do a few other little things. Uh, just give the church holler, a holler and we'll be glad to let you tell you what exactly we need. Um, also, I don't know if you all noticed, but for the first time in a long time, we had five acolytes up here, and I want to thank our youth for willingly stepping up and uh, helping us with our features. Yes. It is my hope that as we move forward with our feast days, especially, um, that we will again have our five-person uh, uh, acolyte group up here, servers, torchbearers, crucifer. Um, so, yes. Uh, I regret to say one thing that is not coming back anytime in the very near future is the third first position because our choir director is extremely allergic to incense. This whole <laughs> and I've heard one or two other people are also rather sensitive to incense. So we won't be bringing that back in the near term, but I do want to point those out. Uh, something I want to point out that is not in the bulletin, that has been a tradition of this church, and all are invited to participate, is next Saturday with the Easter Vigil. Uh, after that service, if you have given something up for Lent, and you want to come and enjoy it, bring it with you Saturday night, and after the service, we'll have a little bit of a potluck downstairs and figure out um, what we, we, enjoy what we've given up. Um, if you've given up, alcohol please don't bring that <laughs> but any of the foods that you may have given up please do bring it and enjoy it's Saturday night is really a time of celebration and um, did you have anything Cindy since you went? okay I just want to make sure um, the other couple of announcements I just want to make real quick is um, Easter lilies this is the last Sunday if you wish to donate an Easter lily for our celebration on sun next Sunday. Please fill out a sheet. If you don't have your checkbook, you don't have money, don't worry about it. Turn in the sheet. We can worry about any donations later on. But we want to make sure that everybody who wishes to donate gets a chance to. Um, the other thing I would like to point out in the bulletin is we still have several slots open for our Monday Thursday prayer vigil. If you are able to spend an hour or two throughout the night, Monday, Thursday, which is this coming Thursday, between 8, 8 p.m. and 11 a.m. on Friday, please stop by the Spirit Hub and sign up. 
as you'll see, there's quite a few openings still. And we have in the past been able to fill almost every slot through the night. I'd love a, us this year to fill every one of the slots. And if you get up there and you notice all the slots are filled for the hour you want to come, come anyway. The chapel's big enough it holds more people than two or three little slots, so please. Uh, something we're going to do that we're bringing back um, is we are going to um, have a commissioning of lay ministries again. <clears throat> something we used to do before pandemic. It kind of got away from us. Um, we're going to begin with the vestry, who we should have done last month because the new vestry began last month. So if I could have all the vestry members, please come forward. <laughs> We did this also at the 8 o'clock service where we uh, commissioned Leslie, who is a member. Um, we also commissioned Ken, who is senior warden. Um, we did Marsha, who is our treasurer, and Carol McLaughlin, who is our recorder. And so what we have before you today is our junior warden, Cindy. Patrick and Barb are the newest members to the vestry. And we have Lori, Judy, our members of the vestry, and Ken, of course, is our senior warden. He will refer to the small sheet that was in your bulletin. Brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, we are all baptized by one spirit into one body and given gifts for a variety of ministries for the common good. Our purpose is to commission these persons in the name of God and of this congregation to the special ministry to which they are called. Are these persons you are to present prepared by a commitment to Christ as Lord, by regular attendance at worship, and by the knowledge of their duties to exercise their ministry to the honor of God and the well-being of his church? I believe are. You all have been called to a ministry in this congregation. Will you, as long as you are engaged in this work, Perform it with diligence? Yes. Will you faithfully and reverently execute the duties of your ministry to the honor of God and the benefit of the members of this congregation? Yes. The Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He is shield to those who walk in integrity. Okay, too late. Yeah. Let us pray. O eternal God, the foundation of all wisdom and the source of all courage, enlighten with your grace the wardens and vestry of this congregation and so rule their minds and guide their counsels that in all things they may seek your glory and promote the mission of your church. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of God in this congregation, I commission you, Cindy, as junior warden. Patrick, Barb, Lori, and Judy, I commission you as members of the vestry in this parish. Give them a round, please. Thank you. So ministry teams, as you welcome new people into your ministry, or if you just wish to recommit your ministry to the work of this church, please let me know. We can begin doing some of these again, maybe one or two a month, and uh, celebrate the ministry that you offer in God's name. I don't see anybody here with a birthday or anniversary listed. Yes, Joe. Oh, that's right. Somebody, Joe, I'll come back to you. How's that sound? And, oh, have we got some birthdays? Um, I have Sunday one to my grandma not here. Not, um, not far. Got that one. Your other grandma. Yeah. Okay. I think that's an excellent idea for the both of you. So let's go back here by Mr. Joe, who had a birthday, and we're going to provide him a blessing too, okay? Come on. <laughs> right here. 
you know, a week late, month late, you know what, we, we give thanks no matter what. Let's see, you're at least 19 years of age, am I right, sir? Almost a dollar. <laughs> okay. Would you all please join me in the birthday prayer? Oh God, our times are in your hands. Look with favor, we pray, on these your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Happy birthday to you, my friend. And happy birthday to your grandma. And Leland, good job helping her out. <laughs> Let us bless the Lord. 